Uh, before I begin my talk, I would like to extend my thanks to Professor Jai Wala and the other uh, faculty members of GSET who uh, invited me for this talk and given me this opportunity to interact with all of you students here. So let me present my screen. Uh, screen. Okay, can you guys see the presentation? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. It's visible? Okay, awesome. And can you see the entire screen or just the... Uh, uh, okay, I see the entire screen, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, awesome. So, hello everyone, good evening. Uh, before we begin our talk, what I would like you to do is we are, we are going to use this innovative app during our seminar, during our webinar today. So you can uh, use the QR code on your... Uh, okay, so first things first, things first. please use someone else's phone to uh, install this app because you will be using your phone to see this webinar, right? So I would ask you to use someone else's phone and it should be an Android phone and you can scan this QR code or you can type this link on Google browser and install this app. So the app installation will take 10 minutes. So what we, you, you can do is you can start installing and keep the phone on the side and then we'll continue with the webinar and use it during the presentation later on. Are you guys able to install it? You can just type in yes in the chat uh, or just let me know. So once you see the download has started on the phone, you can just keep it on the side. Just type in yes in the chat if your download has already started. Okay, I see a couple of yes. Tape. I'll just give two more minutes and then we can start. <clears throat> okay, I see a couple of other yes as well. Okay, awesome. Let's start with the presentation now. Okay, so today our topic, as you already know, is about inspiring engineering innovation. Uh, why I chose this topic was because we have always heard, you know, you should innovate, you should do something new, come out of your comfort zone, think out of the box. But uh, we are rarely told how, how to take that approach. So today what I'm going to share with you are some innovative strategies that has helped students up till now. And I'm assuming that it would help you as well 
in your engineering journey so before we start about engineering innovation i would like to share what i feel is innovation through my experience so i have seen that you if you take different sorts of domains applications and combine your passion and problems when you start connecting the dots between all these things that is when you create something new and that new does not have to be really big innovation does not mean that it has to be always big it could be a service it could be a product but it could also be a theory or a strategy or a process you can say uh, remember uh, in i think in early 80s or 70s initially there were pencil and rubber separately but then one guy thought that how about keeping the rubber behind the pencil itself so that is also an example of innovation so innovation can be like small things to like big things that tesla and spacex is doing it could be anything between all these things or even out of that you never know so how i combine uh, different domains to create boarding pass for success was i have a passion for the field of education and since i also have an experience of teaching in svnit to engineering students in 2012 i'm i'm also very much inclined towards coming up with different learning strategies and i am I, i love inspiring people and i love speaking so what i did was i took two different domains and i combined that with my engineering experience of three and a half years that i had in canada of working in blackberry and a company called brock solutions so i combined all of these th these things to create an innovative venture which is called boarding pass for success to solve the problem to bridge this gap between academia and industry uh by doing so what happens is what my intention is it will instill confidence and creativity in students uh, uh okay i forgot to ask one thing is english hindi okay or is english gujarati okay uh, just say yes for english hindi and i can continue my talk in both of these languages yes okay all right so i combine english and hindi while i'm talking all right so awesome so uh, what i mean to say is when students have uh, that confidence and creativity in them then they will be able to do wonders so that was the main intention behind boarding pass for success that has led us to conduct seminars in all different sorts of schools and engineering colleges in gujarat and mumbai and we have collaborated with different speakers so that we could help you to create out of the box strategies as well now i'm going to share with you some different innovation hacks all right uh initially i mentioned that innovation means connecting completely irrelevant fields and combining it with different applications and concepts so in this talk we are in this innovation hack we are going to connect concepts with applications in a fun way okay all right so when i came to do my masters in canada from university of waterloo i chose the subject of mathematics so that i could brush up my skills before i started other subjects in in my masters now do you guys see this on the screen what is this you can just write down in the chat what do you see on the screen what is it called it's a matrix right it is a matrix and more specifically it's a it's a transformation matrix so now i was attending this subject and the professor asked a very interesting question which completely changed my perspective on how i learn and interpret things so what he said was where will you use this matrix and i was like what sort of a question is this you give me the matrix to solve i'll, I'll solve it because we never think where i'll be using this matrix right now you must know some uh, direct applications of matrices but uh, can any one of you mention in the chat some other direct application of where matrix can be used some anything that comes to your mind again then your answers can be very silly i'm not going to judge you so feel free to write that down in the chat what can you use matrix in in the outside real world fluid mechanics yes yes what else machine learning so again these are all terms storing data farming because we read them right that matrices can be used but how 
how directly can be used right so i was also familiar with all these different terms but then when i saw the actual practical application directly like you know how it is used in machine learning or how is it used in robotics like where exactly is it used then it gets much more interesting so i'm going to share with you two applications which also the professor shared with us now you all know about robotic arms right we have to use robotic arms either to rotate in different directions or we'll be using that arm to move in certain directions as well correct now how we can use matrices directly to use uh, to, to use to rotate these robotic arms so let me play this video so you can see in the video here the arm is rotating about x axis right so that's why here in if you see in the uh, matrix you would see as 1 0 0 in the first column and first row okay uh all right i think someone else is also presenting the screen okay all right oh i'm no longer presenting can you guys see my screen yes yes okay all right so as you can see here in this video the arm was rotating about x axis it was rotating about y axis and it was rotating about z axis and that's why we had to put 1 0 0 and then 0 0 0 1 0 and then 0 0 1 so this is one direct application of how the matrices can be used directly at grass root root level in the direct application all right okay we share are you guys with me up till now just type yes if you are with me okay awesome so the same way it goes for moving the arm in that particular direction as well let's play this video if you see the bottom part because we know in transformation matrix the first three columns are for rotation and the last column is for translation right so that's why when we have to rotate the arms we'll be using the first three columns but when we have to move that arm in that particular direction we'll be using the last column so you can see here that it's d100 when it you have to move in y direction it will be 0 d10 and vice versa if it is in z it will be 00 d1 right so this is so interesting when i got to know about i had heard that matrices is used in robotics but i did not know like this so these are the things that we never think about because what happens is when we look at all these other different applications in outside world we are not able to connect oh this is where matrix comes in the picture whereas at the same time we have been learning that it is used here but we cannot see the direct connection between these two things so this was one application the next application was also very interesting uh you see here this matrices for catching criminals right uh, can anyone tell me how you would you would do this just take a guess how can we use matrices to catch criminals any any simple guess that comes to your mind with coordinates okay ml okay by timings all right by distance okay yes rotating cameras right i i would say even in rotating cameras so what happens is this image is taken from a cctv footage okay but image analysis yes exactly so uh it's taken from a cctv footage and as you can see the image is not clear okay so now the investigation department had to find out who is this person right and how did they do it was let's take an example you see this image on the left side now we all know that image is made up of so many different different pixels right and what is each pixel it's a color and you can represent color in the form of a matrix as well right so when you multiply the matrix of this image along with another matrix which is called gaussian blur you get a blurry image and that's what we have been using on our phones 
right? A direct application on our phones when we use Snapchat stories, we use Instagram stories. You know, when you use different filters on them, what is that? Uh, metrisis is a part of that process that happens also on using different filters on your phone. So what these investigation people did was, as we blurred the image, we can also use different filter. So there's called edge detection, which gives you an outline of that image. Okay. So as you can see on the right side, it gives you an outline. What they did was they zoomed on the arm of the attacker who was attacking that truck driver. And by using edge detection on that image, they found out, as you can see on the right side, they could see it as a sign or a mark, something on his hand. With further investigation and analysis, they found out that this mark is a mark of a tattoo. And particularly by the shape of it, they could figure out that this tattoo belongs to a particular gang in California. And that is how they were able to find the criminals. It's interesting, right? We never think about a direct application, which is so cool. We, we know, okay, it's used over here. It's used in image analysis. But if, if I'm giving you some particular example like this to solve, wouldn't it be so interesting, right? So what we are doing here, we are connecting completely different applications, right? We are comp comparing these different applications with what we study. Okay, now I'm giving you two scenarios. The first scenario is I come, uh, you come to the class with an intention to study or oh, I'm going to study mid matrices. Okay, all right. But if you go to the class thinking, oh, wait, I'm going to study matrices today and I'll, I'll be using that to catch criminals. Wouldn't that be so cool? And wouldn't it completely change your perspective towards learning? So what you should do is you should start. This is how you do out of the box thinking when you co combine different sorts of irrelevant things together. Now, how you can take this perspective how many Sherlock Holmes fans over here? Any Sherlock Holmes fans? Just say yes in the chat. Okay, awesome. Then you're going to love this. So I, uh, we came up with this uh, strategy, which is called Sherlock strategy. So what we are going to do is we are going, I'm going to show you the first two minutes of the series Sherlock, uh, Sherlock Holmes. And we are going to discuss about that. All right. When I met you for the first time yesterday, I said I've got to start a while. You look surprised. I said, did you know? I didn't know. I saw you had that way on yourself. I said, you know, the conversation is around the end. What are they? I said, dreaming of that. And so, army dogs are obvious. The face is tan. And I tell you about the risks. You've got to work with us on the moment. It looks really bad when you walk in the low basket chair and you stand there and you've forgotten about it. So it's at least partly psychosomatic. So it's the original circumstances of the injury were traumatic. We didn't actually know. We didn't actually know. So it's down at Afghanistan or Iraq. You said I had a therapist. It was psychosomatic. Of course, you've got a therapist. And there's your brother. The phone is expensive. You know, they don't be free to play. You know, you've got a you know, it's not only on this, it's a gift from scratches or from many other times. Being in some of his keys, if I was not saying that's going to be treated as one country, I'd like this. So it's a previous owner, and it's been easy to know already. The incredible Harry Watson, clear a family member who's going to use old phone. Not your father, this is a young man's gadget, could be a cousin, but you're all here, you can't find a place to live. But unlike the equipment extended family, certainly not one we're close to, so far it is. My father, who's clear? Three cases says it's all an anti detachment expense. The phone says, Why can I go? It's a bit of a tool recently, because my father's only six months old. He's married in trouble, then six months old, he's just given it away. If she left him, he would have kept it. People do send him it. No, he never would have, he left her. He gave the phone to you, that says he wants you to stay in touch. You're looking for cheap accommodation. You're not going to your brother back home. It says you've got problems with him. Maybe you liked his wife, maybe you don't know if he's broken. How can you possibly know the drink is? Shot in the dark, good one there. How can I actually tell you the scat marks are on the edge of it? Every man goes to plug it into charge, but his hands are shaking. You never see those marks on the seven man's phone, never see drugs for that. Hey, there's he. I'm drunk. What about what? The police don't consult amateurs. Wow, isn't, isn't he just amazing? His deduction powers are amazing. Uh, who is the Sherlock Holmes of India? 
you can write down in the chat byomkesh bakshi right now uh, you see what he did over here in this video he, even as an engineer don't we also reduce things we did up things we conduct deductions based on what we see what we observe so can you guys write in the chat what was he doing what did he do to conduct those analysis he, he just looked at doctor and he was able to make all these analysis right he looked at his phone and he was able to make these observations and analysis so what was he doing what is the first thing that he did just write that word what is the first thing that he did observation right exactly the very first thing he did was observation right what is the second thing that he did what did he do after he observed analysis deducting main points linked it to different scenarios yes but before doing all these things he also did one more thing after observation and before analysis what is that one thing that he did he must have done study it in his mind sure follow but that all comes under analysis okay so what he did after observing was he questioned right you cannot conduct any analysis before you start questioning right so what he did was he first observed right he saw his phone and he observed that there were scratch marks right near the charging slot and then he must have questioned why is there uh, where why are there scratches near the charging slot because if you don't question it you would just ignore it you wouldn't do the analysis connect the dots or even analyze later on right what we do when we go to class we study and then we start remembering for the exam or you know to pass and graduate to get marks what we do is we st we study and then we start remembering but very few of us are there who observe and then question you need to when when professor comes to your class and when you are studying question why does this concept exist what was the need for this concept to exist what was its evolution okay now that you know why it exists okay where will you use this application now you know these sort of strategies it's okay if you're not doing even i didn't do that i'm not saying you have to be like that but once you know these things then you can start doing it for that you have to be aware that okay i i have i have been thought in this direction so let me start doing it and i'm sure if you ask questions your professors would be more than glad to be uh, to answer them because they would love interaction from your students as well so the next thing you should do is uh, observe when you go in the class question why i am saying sherlock strategy is because many of us we underestimate or doubt ourselves a lot we think that we can never come with innovative ideas many of us think like that so when you are uh thinking like or impersonating someone and you think like oh what would he or she do in this situation it brings a different perspective in your mind and then you think like okay they must have done this in this in this situation and by impersonating and thinking like that you are developing your own skills as well so this is how you also connect different different shows your different interests connect it with engineering right because we all think that engineering is the uh, is the ultimate goal but engineering is just a tool it is just a medium to achieve what you want so this is how you create some innovative thoughts in your mind try it out next time uh, sherlock strategy like an engineer now i'm not saying that you can you should do it for each concept that you study because it might not be practical but each stream each field has some important concepts which you should 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 know they are the underlying uh, and the strong foundation that will give you in future so i have just highlighted because there are more uh, students from computer science and it these are the important topics which you should know anyhow it's fine if you don't know other things but these concepts should be clear in your mind 
okay all right so now that we have discussed how to connect our concepts uh, with different application let's talk about how do you connect your passion with engineering okay now all of you must have like seen oh sherlock strategy okay you can use matrices here okay but i don't care right i'm just here to study get marks and that's all it's all great but i don't care uh, how many of us think like that say yes because i used to also think like that when i was in college teacher this is all great right solving equations in a great way but i don't care right because we are not really really interested many of us so that's why you have to find your own personal value let me give you a very simple and a small example let's say there is a kid a kid who is not so good in mathematics okay and you give him or her uh, five of his or her favorite candies and then you ask him or her that uh, what if i give you five candies every day for this whole entire month and assuming that you don't eat them how many candies will you have by the end of this month now even before you ask them this question they would have figured everything in their mind oh my god five of my favorite candies and what is this month june so how many days 30 days 30 into 5 150 i'll have 150 candies by the end of the month they would have done everything in their mind even before you ask them and this is the kid who does not who is not good at mathematics okay now i'm giving you another scenario where you just replace these five candies to some vegetable they don't like let's say karela or brussels sprouts or something like that let's say you do the, you give them that scenario and ask them how many will they have by the end of the month they would be like okay must be something some number i don't care right now here in this case math mathematics is not of interest is not of relevance to the child right what is of interest the outcome that they are getting out of it right when you when you see what outcome you are getting then all these things that you say i'm not good at will start playing its role and help you to achieve that you will start focusing on that more and it is it is just human nature uh, basically humans uh, have that selfish quality in them like why should i get out of my seat and do something for someone or why should i actually you know do that or something else uh, to acquire this i mean mujhe marks mil rahe hai and uh, exams so ho hi rahi hai i'll pass i'll get a job so until you don't have that personal value you are not going to have that uh, interest right so uh, let me give an example of an it student just like you uh, who wants to make neighborhood a safe place especially during these covid 19 times right so if there were any other student they would think well it's it's not my job it's it's the job of the government is the job of a doctor is the job of police what can i do in this in this situation but this student thought no let me think about what i can do as an engineering student or as an engineer so she thought okay let me make an application which will help my neighborhood know where are the infected people so they, so that they can take extra measures not to go in that neighborhood and there is already an app if you if you see about it there is an app which tells you which neighborhood to avoid who are infected and where to take more precautions so what this girl thinks let me make an application let me make a mobile application then the next step would be what do i have to do to create this application then she thinks oh i'll have to learn mobile app development okay what do i have to do to learn mobile app development well i have to learn to code i have to learn java okay so now this person thinks that wait i have this class of java coming up this semester you know what i'll just study all those things in that class why so that she can make that application why to make the neighborhood a safe place so you see irrespective of whether they have interest in coding or not they have interest in that outcome and in order to achieve that outcome they are more than willing to go through the process of creating an application willingly now let me give you an example of another student who attends the class because well coding to sikhna padta hai i am an it student pass kaise honge job kaise milegi right 
who out of these two students would you, do you think would be more effective in the in the class the first student who wants who is attending the class to make an application out there for people or the second student who just attends the class to just get over with it who do you think will be more effective the first one right it's very obvious it is the first one why here she or he, she also does not have an interest in coding but still she is going to be more effective in class why because of what personal value they are getting out of it consider these two students going in the interview of course again the first person will be more effective in the interview why because they have learned so many application and the interviewee would interviewer would know that if she is able to make this application she will be able to make other applications for our company as well so in this whole process she has learned to code and she has learned mobile app development but but with an with an out, outcome of something else does this make sense okay all right so what i mean by here is you have to find you can find different social causes in order to learn the concepts that you are learning right now in your college because frankly if if you fo if you go forcibly to the class thinking ki jana padega that is the time when you all your innovative and you know uh, encouraging ability goes down because you are going there forcefully but if you go and study with an intention ki mujhe karna hai that is the time when the innovation will start and that is the time you will start thinking out of the box all right let's say if there is uh, i can give another quick example if there is a student who does not like to go to the class is an introvert right now we are doing it all online right it's the best time for them so maybe during the times before lockdown they would have thought wait let me make an application where i don't have to go to class and my sir would be able to give exercises and everything online itself so that is also one sort of a motivation to do something new how many have seen the movie uri attack have you seen the movie uri attack yes i see couple of yeses okay awesome so you know this garud bird right the surveillance design that this intern made in uh, drdo right did someone have to tell this intern that dude make this app make this bird and make a surveillance design no right he made it by himself because he had that idea and he did it so you can also do things because it's cool if if you don't have any social causes that you want to be connected to then do something that makes your life easier or make your living situation better you know there are so many automation projects that are coming along so don't think of them as an automation project think of it that it is going to make your life much easier all right you just want to clap and the lights turn on which is a very simple and basic application of automation so think in that direction that it's it's cool right any harry potter fans okay i see couple of oh i see many yeses okay awesome so many harry potter fans here so you remember this newspaper that they had in in the movie where you know when when you look at the newspaper the images are moving right so now the app that you installed on the other phone bring that app out we are going to use this over here is the app installed on the other devices just say yes if it is okay awesome so uh you open open up that app and if you click on it is the app is the app open for you guys okay no okay it will take time you will see the unity figure on the on the phone when you click on that app and if you are not able to find uh if you go in your applications it would be saved by the by the uh letters jp 
and it will be written Harry Potter beneath it. Can you see that? Let me show you. Can you see my phone? Euphoria is coming. Yes, awesome. Yes, that's what I want. Uh, that's what will come up. Yes. If you click on that, you will see Euphoria. Yes, it's working. Awesome. So once it's on, now bring your camera to your phone where this image is. Are you, able, are you guys able to bring your phone? I mean, the phone on which you installed and bring it on the screen where this Harry Potter image is. Do you see the video on the phone? Yes, video is playing. Awesome. Right? Is it playing for others? Yes. So isn't this cool? This is so amazing, right? What technology is this? Augmented reality, right? Now we have heard this augmented reality, virtual reality terms so many times. Isn't it? Isn't it right? But we never think of Okay, we, we always think of, okay, augmented reality, let's search for augmented reality projects. And projects which everybody else have done. But you have to self-reflect, like take a pause and think, okay, augmented reality means doing something like, even if uh, you must have seen on Snapchat stories uh, initially, but like when you put your screen on the ceiling, you would see clouds and you would see sun, rainbows and everything on your phone. That is also augmented reality. So you have to start connecting. Where else have you seen it? And do not keep any limitations. Think about movies, series, anything. This is how you think outside the box. This is how you do something innovative and completely new. Right? There is Google AR as well. Right? Pokemon Go game. Exactly. Right? So you try to connect all those things which you actually like instead of going through all those mainstream projects. And it, it's not necessary that, uh, oh, Civil War. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, the Avengers movie, Civil War. Did they have uh, augmented reality in that? I don't remember, actually. Warp tech. Okay. So you see all these things that pops up in your mind. Try connecting all these things to other different applications or different other concepts as well. And you will love it. No one will have to tell you to do these things. You will just be doing it on your own. So it, if, it, if you do not want to come up with a product or if you cannot think of something like that, it's not necessary that innovation always happens in, in your, uh, uh, in creating something only. You can bring innovation in your job life as well. So for example, I have this friend Kushuma Savai who was a diehard fan of Harry Potter throughout school life. And she was average. Uh, she, she was not like a ranker. She was average. But still, she found a way to connect her uh, job life or her, or her work life with movies. So she is working in the VFX team. And if you see in the credits, her name is also here in the VFX team. She has worked uh, in the VFX team of uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. She has worked in uh, the Ice Age 2 movies as well. And when she shares her experiences, they're amazing. So these things are also out there. Uh, so explore all these new things as well around you because these things will give innovative ideas to your mind. Okay, so this is a very good example that I came across. So uh, frame your problem to fit your skills, right? So what you have to do is find what is your pain point. What are the problems that are going on? If you don't have any problem, try to look what are the problems that the world is facing? What are the problems that the neighborhood is facing? Because in the end, engineering is what? To think of ideas and we have an advantage to bring it out into reality because we, we know the medium how to convert our ideas into action or into projects, right? So in order to cause these other social causes that are happening out there. 
So what you should do is try to think of a problem and see how you can solve that problem with the skills you have. So this is a very good example that I came across. This guy is, his name is Louis Plant. Okay, now you see there is a pipe near his nose. So he has a disease which is called cystic fibrosis. The name is not important. What happens in cystic fibrosis is the, the mucus in your lungs, it, it gets jammed. Because of which what happens is you are not able to breathe properly, right? So the treatment for this is very painful. It is called clapping. You see, uh, you'll see in the next yes. So you see this uh, doctor is like clapping on the back of the patient. That is the only way to get the mucus out of your system. But this is a very painful process and it is very inconvenient. Okay. So now this guy, Louis Plant, was once attending a conference and uh, he was sitting near a loudspeaker. Let me go back. Yes. So he was sitting near this loudspeaker. So we all know that all words are transmitted and propagated with different frequencies. So what happened was, I think someone's phone is unmute. Can you please mute it? Okay, awesome. All right. So what, what happened was when this guy was sitting near the loudspeaker, when he heard words with certain frequencies, he started coughing. And this happened so many times during the whole session. This happened during the uh, so many times during the whole session. Now, what, this guy had a background in electronics and he loved music. So he knew how uh, could not see presentation. Are you guys able to see the presentation now? Okay, can you see it now? Yes, okay, all right. Uh, were you able to see the whole video of Louis Plant from the beginning? Yes, okay, all right. So now this, when this guy was sitting near the loudspeaker, he could, he, he could hear different frequencies and because of that, it made him cough, right? So since he had a background in electronics and he, he, he knew how sound waves propagated, what he did was he created a device called Frequencer. Now what happened with this Frequencer machine is when you keep this machine near the chest and because of the sound wave that it propagates, the mucus inside your lungs, it gets separated, right? And then it makes you cough. You see over here, the sound waves is propagating. So you don't have to do go through this painful procedure. And this way he was able to cure, I mean, find a solution for his disease. And at the same time, he was able to do it pain-free. So he became an innovator and an entrepreneur. So majority of the times when innovation happens is when you have a problem. So uh, one of when he was being interviewed, the interviewer asked him that, uh, now because you had a background in electronics, that's why you were able to create this product. So he gave a very interesting reply, which even you guys should remember all throughout your life. What he said was, if I was not in a background of electronics, I, I might have been a pharmacist, I might have been a, chem a chemical engineer, and I would have found maybe a medicine to cure what I have. Just because this solution is out there doesn't mean there, could, there are no other solutions that would have come out as well. So what I mean is, if you think you are in IT and CS, that does not, does not mean that the problem you are solving should only be from that background. You can combine and have a multidisciplinary approach because the industry is moving towards a multidisciplinary approach. So you have to find what is the problem and see how your skills fit to solve that problem. If you do not have that skills, try to acquire those skills or collaborate with people who have that skills and then work on, pro on such awesome projects. So like I said, you have to find your own personal value in order to innovate something. And you, you would see in history, everything has been innovated out of that need. Uh, when, like we say, use the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention, it, which is true. Like even during COVID-19, there are so many other uh, uh, 
so you, I mean, innovative uh, applications and strategies that have come up that people have started using in these times. Okay, right. So now if you want to have, uh, or let's say if you don't have any other social causes that you don't have in mind, you can search out for sustainable development goals and you will find so many uh, goals that people are working on, the whole world is working on. And uh, the best part is if you come, if you do some innovation in these sort of uh, applications, you are ha you have high probability of getting funding from the university, whether it be in India or any other place in the world, because the whole world is working on this right now. So uh, try to find out what is that something that uh, you care about the most, and then try to think about different solutions that you could have or different approaches that you could bring about. All right, so uh, innovation hack number three. Uh, this was very interesting, which I wanted to share, which was a Coca-Cola strategy. Uh, now in 1990s, yes, in 1990s, Coca-Cola had already established it, its brand and Pepsi was coming up. It was new and also giving it a tough competition. So the board members of Coca-Cola, they sat down to have a meeting on how to beat Pepsi or how to uh, survive, not survive, but uh, how to be a, a dominant, uh, have a dominancy in the market. So uh, the CEO during that time, he had this survey of, um, of American citizens where it, where it shows that you see found 14 ounces. So they measure in ounces. The, he could see that out of 14 ounces of uh, the beverages that people consume when they are thirsty, only two ounces is Coca-Cola or other soda drinks. The 12 ounces of uh, what people consume are other beverages. It could be water, bottled water or juices or tea or coffee or something like that. So that is the point where we saw that Pepsi is not our competitor. Pepsi is not, is not our competition. Our competition is the market, right? So then what strategy he used was they put this Coca-Cola vending machines in each and every corner of the world. And even if you see now, there must be places where you might not get clean water, but you will get Coca-Cola over there, right? Now imagine if they would just be fight, if they would have just been competing with Pepsi, both of them would just be fighting for this two ounces. Whereas the market out there of 12 ounces was open out there, right? So yeah, capitalism as well, but that's a topic for another day. But what I'm trying to say over here is that uh, even when you uh, think about something innovative, yes, Google, Amazon, all these companies have done great work, but also see the market, market what, what the market needs, and then think something innovative. Or even if you go for interviews, there might be 500 or 1,000 applicants, right? It's fine. Those applicants are not your competitor, are not your competitors. The situation is, you have to fight the situation. Even if someone else you find out that this person has a great profile, one of your, your colleagues or one of the other classmates has a great profile, they have done these great projects. Okay, let me also do these projects. But maybe that company does not does not want those projects uh, for them. What you can find out is what that company is working on, what is their vision, how you can connect your personal value and your projects with what the company wants. That is what they, they look for in while interviewing. So keep that in mind that being you is the new cool nowadays. It is okay to follow others, but it's just not okay to follow others blindly. You can always take inspiration, but always have that innovative approach, always be your own self, because that is where the innovation and out of the box thinking begins. Now, I, will, I would like to share something about the STEM Career Talks, which is another innovative initiative that we have started at Coding Pass for Success. So, while interacting with students, we have seen that uh, even after building a, a great portfolio, even after knowing about these great things, people are, students are still confused, like still, what are the options out there after BTEC and what is right for me? And students are also clueless, they have so much potential but they don't know where should I start from or where should I get the right information. 
so what we usually do is we end up asking our relatives or pe- or neighbors or people around us or maybe few seniors but the thing is they would only be able to share the information that they have got from somewhere else right so we thought who is, who are the right people to guide other than the people who are already working in that field right so what we did was we took interviews of engineers and researchers from uh, robotics data science artificial intelligence cyber security computational neuroscience which is also an amazing field out there uh, vfx ui ux and so many more from the countries of india usa and canada and these interviewers have shared some amazing and unique insights about their journey see when we think about people who are working in google or amazon we create a different sort of image for them but they are also just like you they are also just like us they have also studied here in india and then they have made their journey there so if they can do it you can definitely do it that was the whole intention behind the, these interviews they share uh, their career journey along with that they share about what the field is how is the job market in these fields in india us and canada they share what are the industry requirements and majority of them are also hiring managers so they also share what is it that they look for when they are interviewing people and we have uh, taken diverse group of uh, people engineers and researchers from companies like google there is amazon uh, mit which is the world's best engineering uh, or research institute uh, we have a person who is a researcher there doing their phd in computational neuroscience and they talk about this diverse and new field we have roboticists from different fields like swarm robotics humanoid robotics medical robotics and companies like irobot we have a person from stanford university there is a security engineer in autodesk uh, we have a person from iit who is alumni of iit from bharat electronics university of waterloo and what we have what our intention is is to create all of these information under one platform so that you can make wise decisions and you can also know what you should do so that you have these things in your portfolio before you go out there or what you should choose what is something different that is out there that i can choose uh so let me show you a third a 50 second promo <laughs> as well and uh, oops sorry right so this was the promo but what i'm trying to tell here is if you need to know some innovative things you have to talk to people out there you need to have an account on linkedin create connections ask people around because sometimes what happens is even when you will go out after graduating uh, there would be jobs on the job board but there are so many openings uh, that are internal in the company itself that you would never know about them until you know a person in that company so you need to start building a big network and this was an initiative just for that so that students know what is out there uh, how how were these people able to succeed and how were these people able to create their own uh, career journey so i think uh, that is it now i would put the ground open for questions so if you have any questions please let me know
Uh, you can ask any question. It is okay. Uh, you don't have to be conscious that, you know, what if it's a silly question or something. And I'm sure students are not like that anymore. But just feel free to ask questions. Okay, so the question is multidisciplinary is the future. So now no importance of branch or discipline. Is that so? So I would say uh, the answer is not completely no. I would say there is an importance of branch or discipline because let's say if there is a, a person who is interested in electronics, right? So now this person is also studying MATLAB, but they would also need to know a bit of programming and coding as well because the industry needs it. If you see, look at the requirements, you would see that there is a need for people with electronics. Like if you see the jobs for embedded systems, right? If you are from IT and computer science, for embedded systems, if you look for jobs, you also require a knowledge of electronics. So that's where a multidisciplinary approach comes in the picture. And yes, it is important. The world is moving towards that, but I wouldn't completely disagree that there is no importance of branch or discipline. Yes, I would say that your the branch you are in is important. That would be your majors, right? But along with that, you can do a minors in something else which you think you have more interest in. Let's say you are doing it in IT. So you can do your minors in, let's say, cybersecurity. Or you could do your minors in machine learning or artificial intelligence or maybe data science, right? All these things uh, are available on internet for free as well. There are, code, there are platforms like edX, there's Coursera, there's Udacity, Udemy. So you can explore all these things out there. Uh, so I would say that ex when you are exploring them, these certifications will also be, uh, you will also be able to pay money and buy the certificate. But before doing that, explore. Do you actually like doing that? Take few courses and uh, take few sessions of that particular course and see, are you interested in that? If no, then you switch to something else. But if yes, then complete it and pay to get the certification. So I would say yes, multidisciplinary is the future because, and it's not just engineering uh, multidiscipline. It's combining engineering with psychology. It is combining engineering with law or combining engineering with uh, neuroscience. There's, you can see so many different approaches that you can combine with. So like I said previously, Engineering is just a medium. It is not the goal itself. You are using engineering to create something new and you can do that by collaborating with multiple things. And that's when I, that's where I said innovation starts. Okay, there are numerous platforms and technologies available. How student can find out best one? Yes, so this is, a, this is also a very good question. Uh, first, I would say that uh, edX and Coursera have proved to be really good. Even I take courses from Coursera. And uh, I think Coursera has really good artificial intelligence courses on them. And I wouldn't say other uh, platforms don't have, but I have studied artificial intelligence course. I have started artificial intelligence course from Coursera and they are doing pretty good. They have a good way and direction to explain different concepts. And other thing would, what I would say is, under STEM career talks, when these interviews are giving their uh, insights, they have also provided where did they learn from and which is the best platform that you would also have. So you can also check that out and you can also get insights from there as well. How to get your actual project, maybe an app, uh, reach local people, if it is beneficial for them. So I would say uh, right now, when you are creating a project, start doing it for yourself, right? Make your parents use it or make your siblings use it. Once they start using it, you will get, you will get the feedback how uh, visible your app is, right? Or how comfortable is the user interface of that application. Once you see they are able to use it amazingly, then you can start promoting. And then in order to reach local people, there are various other means other things that open up. There could be digital marketing, which you can use. There is always word of mouth, which I would say 
always works out word of mouth is the best way uh, now there are social media platforms right like whatsapp uh, instagram facebook and if your app is useful then people are bound to install it and then use it so i would say uh, right now uh, think about how you can develop that app how you can develop that project if it does not have a reach outside to people it is okay but that app is still helping you to build a portfolio in uh, when when you will be applying for companies outside maybe when you made it that app might not be available for everyone but maybe after a few years when you work on it more when you start networking with people around when you interview and work in a company then you will be able to expand your network and maybe get some more people to invest in your app as well so i, I would say right now just focus on making such apps and i think there is yeah uh, there is also ssip right you can get the funding from ssip from uh, uh, i think yeah i think that's ssip yes so talk to them uh, you can submit your application and you would also receive funding if they find your idea to be correct like the seed money to actually uh, start working on the app and once they see that the product is ready they would also invest more so look out for ssip uh, ask your professors if you do not know about that there is an application which you can fill it up okay if i want to do automation and robotics both then which is the best best platform for that so are you as best platform are you asking to learn robotics and automation or are you asking about uh, a company or a, or after you graduate what is the best platform to approach in that field after graduation okay so i would uh, i would say that automation and robotics uh, here in united states and in canada are both they both have really good aspects even in india i think um, i came across a student from world peace university in pune they have they also have a robotics uh, field in itself like bachelors in robotics so they might also have masters in, in them so look out for those platforms i would say after you uh, even before you graduate we also have uh, on boarding pass for success we have a robotics collaborator who is doing his research here in wpi college in robotics he's a phd candidate he's working on swarm robotics and we have created a mentorship program for robotics so because there is not a uh, a standard template out there or you know there would be courses on robotics but you they wouldn't tell you the research that is going on how to do research in those uh, particular field of robotics uh what are the projects that you should start working on now so we have created a program for that and he also mentors students before they graduate and after they graduate if you have a question about that feel free to reach out, reach out to us on instagram or you can go on our website and uh, send us a message and we'll be more than glad to help you out with that uh where to find out fund for multidisciplinary project so like i said that uh, ssip is there i think they are doing really good they are helping uh, students a lot and they want innovation to come out of gujarat as well so they are, so they are spending a quite amount of money uh, on the engineering students in gujarat so i would say that the platform for finding the fund would be ssip go to their website uh, fill out the application if you if you need guidance ask your professors and they can always help you out with that okay uh, which course is best after be helpful in future years so again uh, i would say that it is okay to go with the trend it is okay to hear the buzz words and uh, do data science and everything it is good it is in demand for sure but you also have to see whether you have interest in that because in the end what happens is you will keep creating goals just based on what is trending and then you will eventually realize that this is not exactly what you wanted and again what happens is because everybody is doing this there is a lot of competition right so first you need to ask is this something that i really am interested in if you do not know whether you are actually interested in that or not again look out for courses outside there are some also real world projects that uh, they help you with on these courses on coursera or udemy so do all those things find out if that is if that is something you enjoy or not and then make a decision based on that and 
if you are asking about what uh, other courses are helpful i would say machine learning is at its peak and by machine learning i just don't mean uh, related to programming you can combine machine learning with other applications it is applicable to education artificial intelligence is can also be applied to consumer products uh, it could be with anything so first find out what is it that you care about is it something that you care about education is it something that you care about environment is it something you care about uh, a starting up a business because artificial intelligence has its roots and everywhere has its branches everywhere so i would say start with artificial intelligence course see if that is interesting and i would say uh, the course on coursera of artificial intelligence by andrew newman he is the founder of, of coursera as well and he has really good inputs on artificial intelligence so first try that out uh, data science is also going on good but the thing is majority people are going towards data science so what i would say is if you go to towards data science try to find a niche why why you people would hire you for data science uh, among all these candidates out there so find out a, an application that you can use and connect to data science and i think that will come in handy for whatever you do in future uh okay all right ma'am if i want to build an app then which knowledge should i know okay so i would say i am not from it background i am from ec background as well and i have always used matlab and uh, what i could say here is if you want to build an app i have seen like there are so many uh, platforms out there which help you the first one is to know about uh, the application development either do you want to build on ios or if you want to build it on android and then i think your professors would be the right people to tell you uh, on which platform you sh you should build an app because they are the right people who are already doing these things in the field so i would say uh, before thinking of making an app think about an application of what app do you want to build try to rap replicate these apps and i think uh, uh, udemy udemy has one course which says uh, 21 apps it has a course which uh, helps you to build 21 apps in, throughout the entire course and it is on android there is also a course for ios as well so in that course they help you first with uh, replicating the existing apps like facebook instagram they will show you how to build all these apps once you are familiar with that then you can always know how to build your own app from that so start with existing such platforms and look out for uh, real world apps on coursera i think you will get many good suggestions on how to build a, build an app on ios and android uh okay the next question is which is the best course for electrical engineers in canada after masters okay so uh, i would say i did my masters in electrical and computer engineering so here uh, electronics also comes under electrical engineering there is no separate uh, it field or there is no separate electronics field all of these courses they either come under electrical and computer engineering or there is a separate degree for masters in computer science which is like core programming and knowing about the computer architecture and other uh, languages as well but i would say that for uh, if you are from if you want to go under electrical engineer and computer engineering category then here in canada they have an option that uh, every semester they will give you like a list of 20 to 25 subjects and you will you have to choose what subject you want to choose like two three subjects based on your interest so maybe you can customize your masters based on which field do you want to go to so let's say there are courses on semiconductors there are courses on power engineering there are courses on sensors and networks there are courses on um, optimization like uh, creating algorithms so if you have to choose and customize your courses so that it is uh, applicable to your future in whatever field you want and along with that what you could also do is there are also uh, minors like i said i did my um, so i did my masters in electrical and computer engineering with also a grad diploma in business entrepreneurship and technology and similarly there was also another grad certificate for power engineering 
so you also get a specialization along with that if you want as well there are also other uh, programs like management science many people offer that because they are good at managing and they don't want to leave technical background as well so they combine these two things in management science and later on they go on to become business analyst and also pro project managers uh, we also have an interview of a business analyst who did it from mumbai uh, in from rit and then he did uh, management science here in usa and he is working as a business analyst so we have one of those interviews as well in the stem career talks if you want to know you can also sign up for that as well um uh, okay uh, can you give information about electromechanical in future scope okay so all right so electromechanical uh, is a fee i think robotics is a very close field uh, related to electromechanical and uh, what is this word that come uh, mechatronics yeah mechatronics is also a term there there are also masters in mechatronics over here and uh, when you combine electrical mechanical and it field together all these three things are required in uh, robotics so mechatronics people also go into robotics over here as well there is also a field called system engineering uh, you can search it out uh, masters in system engineering where you will also get to know about these things as well so i would say yes uh there is a scope future scope of electromechanical and uh, if you need more information we we have a mentor here a robotics collaborator who can also give you more information on electromechanical as well so you can just contact us and we'll get back to you sorry for interrupting you ma'am but uh, due to time barrier we have to end this question answer session today here itself yeah uh, i think all the questions are also over so we are uh, yes ma'am if anyone anyone else has a query you can uh, contact ma'am through her social media yes uh, thank you so much ma'am for joining us today it was really dazzling to have you here thank you and so much and educating your talk was really informative and amazing like it was really nice i thank dr himanshu soni the principal of gh patel college of engineering and technology dr nikhil gondelia sir the head of it department and the organizing committee i also thank all the participants for their enthusiastic participation and patience thank you ma'am once again for giving us your precious time thank you